All right, time to get up. It's Monday. Yay. Labor Day. Let's see what's happening. Oh, Indian Motorcycle Radio. Uh Uh-oh. Let me get on the microphone. Happy Labor Day, everybody. What in the heck is Labor Day anyway? It is um, a creation of the labor movement and is dedicated to the social and economic achievements of American workers, which for you and me means it's the last official holiday of the summer. Federal offices are closed. I got the day off, and the U.S. Postal Service is not going to deliver any bills today. Now that I'm awake, what I'm going to try to talk about this week is my first 500 miles. Some stuff that I'm thinking about buying or just bought to make my riding a little bit more comfortable. And Teresa and I, Teresa Uncaged, we parted ways. And I'll talk about that at the end. Excuse me while I whip this out. You're listening to Indian Motorcycle Radio. Thank you. This is Reverend Ken Blanchard, and I am back on the microphone. You know, my first one, first 100, first 500 miles on my Indian Challenger to 2021 has been pretty good. I've noticed a few glitches, a few break-in things, like uh, the difference between acceleration in the different modes. There's a sport mode and like a, a regular mode and then a rain mode, which I haven't touched yet. Real sensitive. Love the brakes on this bike. I love the handling on this bike. I love... The speed and the ride on this bike it is it's really, really good suspension. Things I'm not too cool on is um, the electronics. How the um, module, you know, the big screen, sometimes seems like it's on its own. But it's gotten a little better um, every, every time I ride, actually. I'm not sure whether it's, um, it's settling in itself as well. I just figured out about that CarPlay thing. I'm still using it as the USB plug. I'm not doing it from Bluetooth because I get to charge my phone at the same time, which is kind of cool. And I, n- I never had the um, Apple Car- CarPlay or AirPlay, whatever you call that thing, hooked to anything before. I never subscribed to it. My kids were like, oh, yeah, I keep it all the time on that. And I'm thinking, no, nah, I'm not doing that. But, man, it is kind of cool when you get your own um, playlist and it's playing it. And I made one just for riding, and I had uh, man, I had some Bee Gees on that thing. I had some Willie Nelson on that thing. I had some ZZ Top, of course, on that thing. I had some Parliament Funkadelics on that thing, some Bob Marley. Man, I was cruising. As you can tell, my tastes are eclectic. But, man, it just made the ride so much better. And then I found out that there was a... Um, there was a button on there to modulate the sound as you speed up or slow down. Perfecto. That was good. So the more I ride it, the more I'm liking it. Um, now, grammatically speaking, that's probably not really good English, but you know what I'm saying. I rode one night um, after dark for the first time, and it got pretty cool this week, which is kind of weird. And I had just changed from the heavy mesh jacket that I was wearing when it was 90 degrees plus and I was baking like a salamander on the street to one of those red plaid mesh jackets that are um, have the armor in it to say, you know, ride in, the, in temperature, blah, blah, blah. That thing was pretty good, actually. It's lighter. It feels pretty good until the temperature dropped to like 68. Then after riding in 100 degree temperature, I was cold at 68. Um, I'll take 68 in the wintertime anytime, but right now, it was kind of bit, it was a little chilly on the homie, but I liked it. I liked the jacket, and I'll talk about that more with the purchases that I will be buying. Like, um, I have a three quarter helmet that I got that has the Indian logo all over it, but it feels like an eggshell. Thinking that if I actually did a spill, I'm going to have one hell of a headache afterwards, and I want a little bit more protection on my grape. Than, um, than that, even though it's a pretty helmet. And because I do a lot of highway stuff, I was leaning back toward safety, you know, full face. And helmets are still important. I had a nice one that was modular, had the uh, Bluetooth in it, microphone and everything for my last bike, for my Harley. 
But I can't remember when I bought that thing. And that right there is a sign that you might need something new. And then I do have the new one. But again, it didn't feel that secure on the highway. Now, I do have the um, new windscreen that moves up by, you know, electronic means, kind of cool. But the way I live around here, the occasional June bug or cicada or rock could uh, mess up my Sunday morning if I got hit in the face with just my goggles on. So I'm looking at different helmets and went to the same dealership that I bought my bike and they had like this small rack of helmets. Not very much in a selection mode. But I went to Cycle Gear and there's a whole wall of helmets at Cycle Gear. If you don't have one at Cycle Gear in your area, I suggest you find one. That's the place to go. Um, I had the um, store person actually whip out a measuring tape, which I haven't seen since I bought my hat. I was real happy about that. She measured my big head. She told me and asked me what I was looking for, pointed me in the right direction, even got the ladder. We tried on goo gobs of helmets um, because every make is a little bit different and also your head is shaped a little weird. So it was a good thing to try on before I bought and I went back and forth. And they got some cool ones that have like really sleek looking racing designs but they were pushing it in my cheek like I was getting punched on, and I didn't like that feeling. Even though secure is where you're supposed to be. I ended up buying a modular, another modular, and just a subdued black version of the one I had before, pretty much. I think it's a little bit updated. Yeah, it is, and it's a different maker. I think Sadisi is the one I got this time. Now, this lady at Cycle Gear talked about all the different standards for helmets and the ratings and man she was she was on it um i think one of the early episodes i talked about helmets and you can check back there and listen again if you missed it but if you want me to talk about it again let me know and i will bring up all the official stuff about helmets because i am one of those people that believes that um, that one head that you have it's important and you shouldn't not protect it can i get an amen somebody The other thing that I bought was a cell phone holder. Now, I'm one of those people that don't like to put a lot of stuff on my bike, but at the same time, I want it to be comfortable. And I got a whole bunch of ads on Facebook for that quad lock thing. And then my first riding buddy, he had one. And I saw him click his phone on that thing and jump on a bike and take off and without any fear of losing his um, million dollar cell phone. And I thought, okay. Maybe something into that quad lock thing. It's a brand. They make other ones. But that one seemed by my one guy to be okay. So I went and purchased it. It came in the mail. And um, I just established it on my bike. Hopefully uh, it doesn't fall off when I'm riding. But I've already tested it once that one night I rode. Just yesterday. And uh, it's pretty cool. Integrated it with um, the command module and... uh, Nice. Nice, actually. The other thing I bought was a cushion for my big behind. When I rode my Harley, that seat, after a while, wasn't much cushion. And I don't have an iron butt. I like cushion. I like feeling good. So I bought this thing off of Amazon. And I think I paid about twenty nine ninety nine for it. And it fills up with the air. I stuck it on a little pump I have in my, in my garage. Pumped it up. And strapped it on after I took the seat off and strapped it on really nice. It raised my height on the bike up about an inch. So if you are um, standing challenged or vertically challenged, it will make you a little bit taller in the saddle. And if you are a tall person, it might actually help you make the seat fit for you uh, without having to buy an expensive seat. The maker of the seat was called Aqua Capsule. I think you can actually put water or air in it, but I'm going to do the air thing. I bought some riding shoes, which, you know, that doesn't make me feel like a young cat after that because these look like tennis shoes. They are motorcycle riding shoes that are breathable, and they were $89.99. Got them on Amazon as well. 
They're um, Italian-made. They look uh, called Borlini is the style and the brand. And they came with uh, fluorescent red laces on a black shoe, which was right up my alley because it fit all my bike's colors. And I think I am looking like a cool cat. I don't care what nobody says. Only thing is, I think I bought the size too big. These are 12s, and I wear between an 11, 11 and a half, and I wasn't sure. Cause sometimes you buy stuff from um, the Asian markets, and it's a little tight, a little small in general. That's a general statement, and I didn't want to be squeezing my feet up in some shoe, but this one's a little bit, probably about an inch too long. But I'm working with it, so if I have to add um, more socks or something, that'd be cool. Other purchases, bought a battery tender, again, so my electronic prostitute of a vehicle won't, um, was that too harsh? My bike requires a lot of juice, so... I plug that sucker in after she cools down just to make sure that she will start when I want her to start because I had that thing happen on the second day I was going to try to ride where it just died and it just it scarred me for life. Yeah, it did. Had to tow it to the dealership and look like a boob when the only thing was wrong was that my battery was dead and everything is counting on that battery to work. So that's my uh, that's my thing for right now. So what I'm up to, I bought a helmet, a cell phone holder, a cushion for my big butt, a battery tender, and I bought two jackets. Now I got a pretty nice armored jacket that I can wear in the wintertime. Came with a nice um, liner, and then I bought that red and black checkered mesh shirt with armor in it that's pretty cool for right now, and the riding shoes. Yeah. Amazon is loving me right now. But yeah first 500 miles i've managed to knock it over a little bit over 500 now and i'm testing and checking all my bolts and screws and belts and everything i can think of that might have wandered loose but it looks like it's breaking in pretty good Um, i'll have to hit my third gas refill today when i ride and i'll probably put another 100 on it today just riding in southern maryland I got some plans, though, now. I'm actually thinking about riding up to um, Lake George. It's going to be about a six-hour ride sometime this fall. I'm going to plot that out. And where else I want to go? In Delaware. Maybe find me a nice little beachfront property in my dream somewhere. Going to ride around in uh, Maryland in the areas of Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass. They're all stomping grounds. The roads out there are pretty quiet. Just got to cross... The Chesapeake Bay Bridge, which is a monster. How do you feel about riding across the bridges? Do you have any where you live? Some people have a lot of angst about that. And I'll tell you how that goes when it's my turn. One of the things I wish I had on this motorcycle that I might actually try to figure out is a way to hold my motor, not hold my motorcycle, hold my guitar. It would be really cool if I had like a case uh that mounted like that quad lock on my bike that when I'm going to church that I can, or going to a, maybe someday a gig. Yeah, that's one of my dreams is to be a, uh, a gigging musician in my old age to be good enough that somebody would want to play or have me play with them, rhythm guitar and stuff, you know. Yeah, but that's the side piece back there. Then what else we got? We got the, um, oh, air pressure. I almost forgot. When I was coming home that night, went to a cigar bar with some preachers, and we was all puffed out, and I was smelling like tobacco, and I thought, man, this is going to be great to air my clothes out on this ride home. Had no idea the temperature had dropped about 15 degrees from when I left, and it was chilly on the ride back. But I got an indicator light for air pressure, which... If you think about it, if the temperature did drop that much, then the cold air temperature in your tire would also drop, which also means that my tire was pretty close to being under inflated from the beginning if it's going to go down that much. So when I got home and the next morning, I spent a good time trying to find that little doohickey that you put the air into. Yeah, I had to crawl all up upside down which means I'm going to buy a jack here shortly 
because that was the most uncomfortable move for my bones to find that little valve uh, in between on the, on the, uh, on the rim. But they were, they were low, no doubt. Went back to my book. Now, you got to take care of your book, your uh, factory guide, your, your ownership manual, and saw that the, that thing was way off from what it should have been. So, luckily, one of my purchases was a pump. So, I hooked that thing up like I was in NASCAR and pumped my tire up. I'm looking forward to the difference of the ride in a little while with some more air in the tire, the, the correct version. Um, and I, it's a negative thing, bad thing that I didn't check it because you can't visually see your air pressure, your tire pressure by looking at it most of the time. Unless there's like a flat spot, you can't tell. So one of the things that you want to do, don't be like me on this one, is just I assumed my bike was new. I have no problems. So I did not do the proper motorcycle safety checks that you should do before you ride. And tire pressure is a good one for that. An under uh, pressurized tire is not a good thing. It will have more surface on the road, it won't roll like it's supposed to, in short. All right, my brothers and sisters, I also want to say thank you for listening, downloading, and subscribing to this show. Um, this is going to work, be a work in progress as I navigate my life at this time, as I navigate um, what I'm trying to do here with this show. I might potentially have a sponsor coming, and I'm looking forward to that. It's been a tough few weeks. As you know, you might have remembered that my wife is not doing so hot from her uh, brain surgery. Well, she's now been in the hospital again for three weeks now. And uh, this week, my dad uh, would have died four years ago. And my stepfather, as of Saturday, is in the hospital for a stroke. Uh, a longtime friend, my lawyer of 30 years, passed away unexpectedly in a nursing home in a facility we thought was just for rehab. Um, so that's um, a little bit on my plate right now. My kids are kind of stressed out right now, so the family's in a, in a tough bind. My job is stressing me out right now, even though I'm blessed to have one. Um, it's just still been tough. And people are still complaining about social media, about the COVID, about what happened in Afghanistan, about politics, about so many things, about wearing masks, and this little sunshine going on around here, a lot of negativity. And I was a little sensitive about the show and me and Teresa decided to part ways. That's why she's not here right now. That's why um, you hear my voice. But I'm glad to be back, actually. I actually got something to say. I actually got things to share. I actually got a plan for this show. And I'm hoping that you stick around to be a part of it all. Warts and all. I don't know your feelings about Teresa as a host, but... I think she'll be having a, her own show pretty soon. Um, she was feeling pretty feisty about Teresa Uncaged. She was trying to expand that thing all over the place. And she'll be doing something. I guarantee it. I appreciate her. I mean, a lot. And I plan to support her in her new endeavors if she pops up on the microphone again and you hear her show. And like Forrest Gump would say, and that's all I'm going to say about that. The first 500 miles have been great. I got a new helmet by Sidisi. It's a modular. Um, I got a cell phone holder by Quadlock. I got a new cushion for my butt from Amazon. And uh, if there's some new gear that you think that I should have or think about getting, feel free to send me a note. Show me on our Facebook page at Indian Motorcycle Radio. Check me out at BlanchardNetwork.com. It's the Facebook, no, it's the website for all the podcasts that I help produce. And uh, if you know the words of prayer, please pray for your brother. I'm going through some stuff and I didn't mean to take it out on Sister Teresa. 
But it's just going on, man. And sister, it's going on like that. And uh, I'm about to get to wind therapy and sweat out the oldies here in a minute because the sun is back. It's nice and muggy in the nation's capital. And I'm looking forward to driving around. I dug up some uh, some video stuff. So I'm going to probably stick some cameras on my bike temporarily. See if I can get some footage of um, some rides so I can post some stuff on our Facebook page and on our Instagram account at Indian Motorcycle Radio. We're there as well. Just in case um, nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And it's not a damn thing you can do about it. You can monetarily support this podcast by going to buymeacoffee.com forward slash motorcycles. There'll be links in the show notes. Work here is done. I'm needed elsewhere now. I'm needed wherever outlaws rule the West, wherever innocent women and children are afraid to walk the streets, wherever a man cannot live in simple dignity, and wherever a people cry out for justice. Oh. All right, you caught me. Speak the plain truth. It's getting pretty damn dull around here. All right, my friends, that's it for this week. I want to thank you for listening, downloading, and subscribing to your favorite righteous podcast, Indian Motorcycle Radio. Now may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon you. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Kick stands up. Let's ride. Yeah.